Hey YouTubers, Wet Movie One here, back again for another Blu-ray DVD update. Right now I'm representing my, you know, the Batman T-shirt. You don't know who I am. I am Batman. I, I, I still can't even do that very well. But uh, <laughs> that start off with the first one right here. This one's from Universal, and that is Snow White and the Huntsman. Um, I neglected to see this one in the theater, and I just recently watched. You know, I didn't really go see it in the theater. My sister did because she's like you know a, a fan of Kristen Stewart. This one starts Kristen Stewart and Charlie Theron and uh, Chris Helmsworth. Um, I watched it a, a little while ago with my sister, and uh, in this story, so Charlie Theron plays the Wicked Witch, and uh, she needs you know she keeps getting old and old because her uh, mother put like a weird little spell on her or something like that. I was kind of, when I was watching it. I don't want to lie. I was kind of in and out of it at the same time. I was watching it with my sister. You know, because I was talking to her, and then, you know what I mean? Like, I was just kind of, like, in and out of it. I don't know. You know how some movies, your, inter your, 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 your interest is held, and then sometimes you kind of, like, drift off, you know what I mean? Because it's not super perfect. But I I kind of liked it, you know what I mean? Like, uh, Charlie Theron's character is the Wicked Witch. She she t uh, she takes over this kingdom, which is uh, Snow White's and her family's kingdom, and she just goes in there with her, her knights and her, her people, and this knocks off the whole family pretty much, you know what I mean? Because at the beginning of the movie, Snow White's mom passes away. And then when uh, the Wicked Witch comes in, I, I was I was like saying Wicked Witch. When she comes in, she, you know, kills Snow White's father in the bed or whatever. When all the stuff's happening, um, Snow White, you know, the Wicked Witch keeps Snow White in this castle area. Like, away from everybody, just like chained up as, like, as a prisoner pretty much. And uh, when she gets older, and... Uh, you know, the Wicked Witch wants her and she finds out that she needs Snow White's heart and her soul to keep her young forever. The Wicked Witch's brother goes down there to get Snow White to bring her up there to finish her off. She ends up get, going, getting away, getting a nail and like scratching the guy's face and running off into the woods. And then it's just pretty much the search for Snow White again. You know what I mean? The w Wicked Witch gets some huntsmen and like says, yo, you know, go, you know, go uh, find Snow White for me and I'll bring your, your wife back to life again, type of thing. It's, it's, it's all kinds of crazy and dark. Like I said, I was in and out of it a little bit with me, with my sister and stuff. Like, it didn't keep my interest fully, but it was still visually stunning. And it was cool to see the, the seven dwarves in real life instead of, you know, like, dopey duck and sleepy, you know what I mean, like, in the cartoon. But it was just cool to see, like, live action ones and stuff, you know. Snow White and the Huntsman, it, it, it's worth a rental, a, you know, a high rental. Uh, next two are from Comedy Central, is uh, Jeff Ross, Roast America. Uh, you guys all know Jeff Ross, he's mostly in the uh, Comedy Central roasts. You know, like, you know, roast of, like, Bob Saget, roast of, uh, you know, whoever, like, David Hasselhoff and stuff like that. He's always, like, the, the guy, one of the guys there, along with, like, Lisa Lampanelli, that always roasts people. And uh, this is his, like, comedy tour. But in this in this DVD, I believe it's a burn on demand one you can get on like uh, Amazon or whatever, and uh, or ComedyCentral.com. But um, in this one, it's not really a whole comedy special. It's pretty much bits and pieces of where he went in his tour, where he would uh, get people from the audience to come up on stage, and the people in the audience knew the people that were coming up there knew they were gonna get picked on somehow by him so he's like asking people to come up on stage going alright guys if you're fat if you're weird if you're like awkward looking please come up on here cuz I'm gonna make fun of you you know what I mean people went up there and wanted to be made fun of him and stuff it's kinda cool because uh, he, he goes to like what Minneapolis Seattle and Nashville in this thing and he's like little clippets of stuff it was just really funny if you know what roast stars is when somebody is making fun of you and stuff but it's it's funny it's funny at the same time there's a couple of things in here that Jeff Ross did that said that he said multiple times in different locations that got kind of tiring when you watch this DVD. Like uh, whenever, like one of his go-to jokes is, "Oh good, I got you know, like okay, I gotta jerk off now." Like when you see when you if you ever whenever you watch this, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, that is kind of old." But there is a lot of funny stuff in this one. Jeff Ross roast America, and the next one right here is a Blu-ray, and it's Louis Black and God We Rust. Um, it's a comedy special with Louis uh, Black, and it's, it's, I, th I thought it was really funny. It's kind of hard, like I say, to review comedy, but there's a bit in here when he's talking about how, you know, like his cell phone, 
like different cell phone devices and apps and stuff and how like the more apps you have the more brainless you are and I know it's just kind of funny because every time he's like saying something funny he's always like moving his hands around like this and shaking his finger and <laughs> he, he's a he's a crazy he's a nutball but I, I thought it was absolutely funny if you guys get a chance to check it out Lewis Black and Godry Rust they're very funny stuff right there and next up right here from 20th Century Fox is season 4 of Sons of Anarchy. Um, I'm only a little bit into the season so far. Be, I, I just watched like what, like two or three episodes already. And geez, it's, geez, man, it's, it's getting real like intense and really, really good. I don't, I don't want to ruin anything for you if you guys haven't seen the season yet. But like people are starting to form alliances in this show. You know what I mean? Like Sam Crow is just going crazy in the, in this in this season here. Um, I just really love this show, to be honest. The thing that got me to start watching Sons of Anarchy was uh, finding out that, you know, Peggy Bundy, uh, I, keep forget, I keep forgetting her name because every time I see her, I always think of her as Peggy Bundy. She's a, she's a great actress, but, I, you know, you know who I'm talking about, Peggy Bundy from the Married Children and stuff. She, she's just really, really, really cool to watch on screen. But all I know is I'm really excited because I'm still watching the show right now. But uh, if you guys didn't know, Season 4 is now out on DVD and Blu-ray. Go out there and check it out from the 20th Century Fox, guys. And these next two right here are from Kino. And, uh, oh my god, I fell in love with this movie that I, I'm going to show you right now. It was, I was watching it right before I was going to go into work and stuff one day. Like, I was in a weird, like, crappy mood because, you know, work it hasn't been going kind of good lately. It's been kind of crazy, kind of hectic over there. And when I watched it, it put me in this really good mood. You know what I mean? And I went to work. I was in this awesome mood. You know, and I was doing my thing, doing my thing. And, of course, my, my mood slowly started to change. Well, at least I went to work in a good mood. <laughs> but that movie is uh, Buster Keaton and the Navigator. Uh, it was made in 1924. If you guys know Buster Keaton, he's a silent film uh, comedian, actually. You know what I mean? A silent film, like, actor, comedian. And uh, in this story... Um, you know how silent films are, you have to like read subtitles and stuff, like you see the movie and then a little bit of subtitles, and little, you know, like back and forth, seeing what the story's about. And, uh, to be honest with you, 99% of the subtitles that are in this movie, or, you know, title cards or whatever, were, th were, were within the first, like, five minutes of the movie, and they're pretty much the rest of the movie, there's not really, in, in, you know, any subtitles, you're just watching it and having a good time. You know, like, just, you know, chilling out and just watching the story unfold in front of your eyes and not having to like you know reading the reading the toddler cards is fine i don't have a problem with that but like if there's like a lot of them like a lot of like dialogue type stuff it's kind of like huh but this one is a pretty much about a, a you know buster keaton's character uh beginning of the movie he uh he, he wants to get married right and uh he he's he's setting up for like you know, he got tickets for a cruise and everything and uh the thing is he doesn't have a girlfriend so he's like, you know what? And he like, you know, I'm, a, you know, I'm a, he, he like walks across the street or whatever. He drives right or whatever, walks right across the street, knocks on this person's door, going, "Hey, would you like to marry me?" And the girl's like, "What are you talking about?" You know? And uh, she's like, "No, hell no." You know? So he goes home all kind of sad and stuff because he doesn't have a, you know, a wife to go out on the on the cruise with. But uh, later on in the story, I don't want to like ruin a little bit of what happens and how the people get on this boat. But later on. Uh, Buster Keaton and the girl that he asked to get, you know, to marry at the beginning of the movie get uh, stranded on this boat that gets set adrift. You know what I mean? It's like like a big boat, not like a little boat and stuff. They get set adrift, and they're they're stuck on this big boat, not knowing what what to do, or, you know, where to go and how to cook, you know, try to find the stuff to cook and do stuff with. And there's just a there's this beautiful sequence that I I absolutely fell in love with when they each don't know. They're on the ship together, and they're like running around the ship, up and up and around, up and down stairs, up and around, and they keep they keep missing each other. You know what I mean? Like just like nearly missing each other, and then they keep moving around up. And, so like you know, it, it's a beauty, beautiful choreographed scene. It's pretty much just them on a boat and what they experience on this boat. And there's this part where, like they they see land, right? They they they're on the boat and they see this land. They're like, oh, yeah, there's land. And then they go, oh shit, there's cannibals on the side. There's like people up there with like, you know, spears and shit going, ah, ah, ah. They're like, oh no, cannibals. And then of course something happens and then the, the boat looks like it's going to start to flood. It's just really, 
really fun. It's a silent film, but it was absolutely fantastic. It's about an hour long from 1924, and beautiful 1080p picture. There's a, a behind the scenes featurette in here, with just like a, a film historian talking about the making of the movie with like pictures and stuff. It's just really cool. Kino did a very good job with this movie. I absolutely fell in love with it. And next up is uh, Fela Kunti, uh, a documentary about this, uh, what's it called, African singer, uh, ja jazz performer. Not jazz, it's like, he, he's like, it's like a mixture between um, African music and chants and jazz a little bit. It's kind of, it's kind of a cool little mix. But it, it's a documentary about the, about the man. I don't want to lie, I didn't really know anything about him until I uh, checked this movie out or checked this documentary out. It's actually a documentary uh, called uh, Teacher... Uh, don't teach me nonsense, and uh, there's also a a, a a full concert on here with him uh, from 1978. But uh, uh, Fela Kunti, uh, hopefully I'm saying the name right, is uh, uh, like I said, he's a singer and a performer, and uh, he's real political, and he doesn't really like what's going on in his country of Nigeria, and like you know, all the political stuff that's going on. So in his music, he speaks out about it. And of course, back you know, back in those times, you're not supposed to do stuff like that, and the government didn't doesn't like what he didn't like what he was doing. And of course, they were like raid his home and do all this other stuff. Yet he just like kept he kept speaking out, kept speaking what he feels, and that's what that's what I like about America. You know, you can just you have the freedom of speech. You can say whatever you want and not have to, you know. You know what I mean? Like, you have the freedom of speech to say what you want. And I just, I just, that's what I got from this movie. You know what I mean? About a man just saying what he feels and putting it into his music. And I just absolutely love this movie. Uh, Fela Kunti, uh, Don't Teach Me Nonsense. It was all, I, I thought it was cool. It's not a movie for everybody, but I, I just thought it was cool. I like the message behind it. And uh, next up here uh, is from Lionsgate. And that is What to Expect While You're Expecting. Uh, starring uh, Jennifer Lopez, Cameron Diaz, Elizabeth Banks, and uh, there's Chris Rock in there. And uh, it's just pretty much, it's, it, it wasn't the greatest, but it, it, kept, it, kept my, it kept me interested. It's like one of those ones you would rent, rent once and just kind of like forget about, or watch once and kind of forget about. But, you know, it, it was nice. It's pretty much about all these, these people, have, you know, having a baby pretty much around the same time. There's four women here. And uh, one can't have a baby, so she's she's going she's trying to adopt one. This other one played by you know the one that can't can't have a baby and a, a, that is adopting one is Jennifer Lopez, and Cameron Diaz's character is like a reality show star, and uh, she's having a baby and uh, what she what she does trying to like you know uh, do the show as she's pregnant and you know whatever, and then Elizabeth Banks' uh, character is a person that works like at a baby store. She has you know. She has her own, like, uh, you know, baby shop. And she's having her baby. And it's just, it's just, it's pretty much, a, it's, a, it's a chick flick. But there's some funny moments, funny moments in there with Chris Rock and the guys pushing the baby, pushing the babies and having the babies on their chest as they're walking through a park and stuff. That stuff was kind of funny. It's just the, the trials and tribulations of having kids and what happens sometimes with people that try to have a baby and it just doesn't work. Um, I found it to be entertaining, but it's not exactly what I thought it was getting into it. it, it, it it's a more of a, a girl movie. But uh, it, it's, it's worth checking out if you guys are into like Cameron Diaz and Chris Rock and stuff. I thought Chris Rock was going to be in it a lot more from like the posters and stuff that I saw. But uh, yeah, what to expect while you're expecting. It, it's pretty cool. Like I don't want to ruin it because there's other little things that happen in it with certain characters that I don't want to ruin for you. But uh, yeah, what to expect while you're expecting. Uh, next up right here is Girl in Progress with starring uh, Eva Mendez and uh, what's her name again? Patricia Arquette, you know, uh, from like was uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, I believe, when like, you know, Freddy's after her, like trying to eat her and shit. But um, Girl in Progress, uh, Eva Mendez plays a plays the mother of, of this young girl. I, I don't even want to try to pr pronounce the character's name of the of the daughter. It's just pretty much a coming of age story. But told a little differently because in this one, and she's taking this class, and this class is like a reading class talking about like poetry and books and stuff like that. And her teacher's talking about coming of age stories. So she starts reading these books, going, Oh, so 
I, I'm gonna become, I can become a woman if I do this, this, or this. You know what I mean? Like, uh, get my, I have to have my first kiss. I have to, you know, make love to, to someone for my first time. Like, you know, be all gothy and stuff and scare my mom type of thing. You know what I mean? Like, she's reading it from books. She's trying to come of age, but doing it through books and literature. It's kind of funny. But uh, not, not, not a funny, funny movie or anything. But in the process of her doing this, she, lo she pretty much loses... Her friend, you know, her, her friend in the process. It's, I don't know, I, I thought it was kind of cool for uh, for this. I was, to be honest, I wasn't expecting a whole lot from this. And I actually really enjoyed it. And uh, this next one right here kind of reminds me of like Old Yeller in a way. And that's the Adventures of the Wildness family. And uh, this is one from 1975. Um, it's just pretty much a, a family that lives in the city. And, like, they're just sick and tired of city life. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the cars and the, the this and that, the fast pace of city life. And the daughter just has, like, a little bit of health problems and stuff. And it was, and the parents just think it would be a good thing to, to get her out of this environment. So, they just go out to the wilderness, you know, bust out and build, you know, start building their own little house out of, like, trees and stuff. It's just, it's just really kind of cool. And, you know, just little adventures along the way. It's kind of like... A mixture between, like I said, uh, Old Yeller and like Milo and Otis, but with a family, you know, with people and stuff too, and animals, like messing around with the kids. There's bears, real, real, real bears and everything. It's just really cool. And uh, I found myself to really, really enjoy just really kind of like chilling out and, you know what I mean, just watching it. And I found out there's also a part two and three, but the only way you can get it is on like video demand. You know, video on demand on like Amazon or... You know, all those places you can get on video on demand. If you if you ever heard of this movie, if you watch it, it's pretty cool. I, I want to go check out part two and three already. I know, it, it was really cool. The Adventures of the Wi Wildness Family. Alright guys, next up is from uh, Wellgo USA. Uh, I got two awesome box sets here to show you. Um, right here first is the Shaw, uh, Shaw Brothers Collection Volume 1. And the Shaw, Br Shaw Brothers Collection Volume 2. Um... These sets came back, came out back in, uh, sorry, hey there Milo, he wants to be a part of this update today. Uh, and it came back in, two, came out back in 2009, but these movies are older, like, you know, 70s and stuff like that. But, uh, these movie, uh, volume one right here has the heroic ones, the, the battle wizard, which I, I wanted to get this, this box set for, uh, the duel of the century and two champions of Shaolin on here. Um, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. The other box set right here. Has a uh, Brothers Five, the ho uh, Holy Flame of the Martial World, Journey of Doom, and uh, the bl the Brave Archer and his mate. But uh, if you guys are really into Milo, what are you doing? Get down! And my cat's going crazy right now. Anyway, if you guys are haven't gotten into kung fu films yet, if you haven't even tried to watch them, get get one of these box sets. This is one of those box sets that. You, you you would get and you know awesomely get into awesome kung fu movies. There's a all the pretty much all these ones are awesome. Hey guys, as you're watching me talk right now about the cool uh, uh, box sets from Wellgo USA, I call this movie the Battle Warrior. That my cat threw me off. I was just kind of in the middle of it was the middle of the night when I was filming it. It's actually called Battle Wizard, but uh, it's an awesome movie. I suggest checking that one out, guys. Uh, you know they're all pretty much. Uh, Simple stories, you know what I mean? Bad guy versus good guy. My cat's going crazy. Cat scratch fever time. But, uh, yeah, man. These box sets have some really awesome uh, movies on them, like I just told you. And if you you want to start collecting uh, martial art movies, these are the sets I would go for first. Just to, you know, get your foot wet when it comes to martial art movies for a good price. You know what I mean? I believe on Amazon they're like nineteen ninety nine. you know, in the $20 range. And you get four films. Really great transfers. You guys won't be disappointed with these box sets. Like I said, if you want to get into, you know, Kung Fu movies, these are the sets to do them. And after you watch these, like if you, you guys go out there and get them, after you watch these, calm, you know, hit me hit me up with a message and I'll tell you other cool Kung Fu movies to go check out, like Drunken Master, uh, Snake in the Eagle's Shadow, uh, what's called Master of the Flying Guillotine, uh, two, two Toothless Tigers, a lot of cool stuff that I can tell you to go check out. As soon as you guys watch these and let me know what you guys think about them. Uh, Shaw, uh, the Shaw Brothers Collection Volume 2, which is, I love this cover with a sword. 
and Shaw Brothers Collections Volume 1. As you can tell, the Shaw Brothers kind of ripped off, you know, Warner Brothers a little bit in the way, you know what I mean? They changed it up just a little bit. But I always thought that was kind of cool. I always loved the symbol of the Shaw Brothers when, when, when it comes on. I always loved that. I'm like, yeah! Like, I feel like a man, you know, like, I always have, like, a, a hair sprouting out of my chest when it happens. Like a new one, you know? But, uh, yeah, it's the Shaw Brothers Collections Volume 1 and 2, man. Check these ones out, guys. They're killer. And uh, next up right here is another cool Power Ranger one. Power Ranger Samurai Monster Bash. Um, this one right here is also put out by Lionsgate also. And uh, this one only really comes with one Power Ranger Samurai episode. And, uh, and that one is pretty much a flashback episode where a bunch of the monsters and villains that the pa Power Ranger Samurai defeated over the past couple, you know, the past episodes of this, you know, the seasons of Samurai. And they're just like talking about the times of uh, them trying to fight the Power Rangers because in this they're ghosts and you know they're not really they're not they can't really can't go out there and fight anymore so they're just they're ghosts now in the afterlife or whatever the, you know the weird Power Ranger you know monster ghost afterlife talking about their experiences with the Power Rangers and going in the flashback of their episode and stuff it, it's kind of a to be honest it's kind of a weak episode. But the only thing that's cool about this, that I thought it was really killer about this uh, DVD here, because uh, like I said, there's only one episode of Power Rangers, and that's called uh, the Power Ranger Party Mashup or Party Monster, sorry. And you get two, you get two bonus episodes on here, but the, of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the original OG Power Rangers. But you get two Halloween episodes of the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. But the thing is, like I said, I think is cool about it is that the kids these days that don't know anything about the original MMPR are going to buy this DVD going, oh, Power Ranger Samurai, you know what I mean? And then they get to get the OG look back of where they, you know, Power Rangers, you know, started and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, oh, so that's what my parents probably watched, you know, when they, when they, when they kept talking about, you know? I just think it's pretty cool to have that in the set. And I don't want to lie, the the party, you know, monster party or party monsters or whatever the episode is of uh, Samurai on here was kind of weak, to be completely honest with you. But it's just cool that they have two original Power Ranger uh, episodes on there, Halloween specials and stuff. I thought that was killer. But um, next up right here is the newest Pledge, uh, starring uh, Jason Mewes, Kevin Nash from WWE, Andy Malinakis and stuff in here. But... They're on the cover and everything, but to be honest with you, they're only in it for about five minutes each or less. You know, it's just them. It's just pretty much to get people to go out there and buy the movie. Jason Mewes is in it a little bit more than like Andy, Metal, Andy Melanakis or Kevin Nash, but uh, it's just pretty much about a sorority house. There, it's like pledge pledge time, and this one guy in there is pledging the sorority, so uh, he's just there doing what the people, you know, doing what the people of the house tell him to do because he's the pledge. And uh, one night after, you know, one morning after this killer party that they had, everyone's just kind of like, you know, laying around the, the house and everything like that. And then, the, you know, there's like a knock on the door and uh, they make the pledge get up and go get it. And when he opens the door, there's a baby on the front, on the stoop of the, of the sorority house. And uh, the, guy, the guys are like, what are we going to do with this? You know what I mean? But then they end up really liking the kid and start taking care of the kid, you know what I mean? But it's still in the funny stoner kind of, you know, feel you too, but I thought it was cool. It's nothing super special or anything, but if you're going out, you know, if, for like a, if you're going to go out to go rent it or something for like a Saturday afternoon, that that's the perfect time to be watching something like this, you know what I mean? You have nothing to do on a Saturday, just go check out the, you know, the newest pledge to just chill out at home, you know what I mean? It's not a masterpiece in filmmaking, but it was fun, you know? And uh, next up right here is from A&E, and that is Gene Simmons' Family Jewels, uh, Season 6, Volume 1 and 2. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> these, this season right here, is one of the most depressing seasons of this show that I've I've seen because all the rest of the seasons is just like Gene Simmons and his family having fun, you know, partying, doing this, doing that, going to play, you know, going to all these places, having fun. And in this one, uh, Gene Simmons is going through like relationship problems with his wife Shannon, and like they're like you think they're gonna be on the brink of breaking up. So he's like Gene and and uh, Shannon are going to like therapy, talking out their problems, 
And there's even an episode in here that really, like, I, I, I cried a little bit. I don't want to lie. Is when Gene, you know, goes back to the, you know, goes back to where he came from. And, you know, visits his, you know, because he has all these father issues that, you know, he, you, you find out in the, in the season. And he goes back and he, you know, his dad's passed away already. And he ends up going to the gravesite, you know, to where his, where his dad's at. And he starts, you know, it's just all this, he's saying stuff, and he's there with his half-brothers and half-sisters, and and he starts, you know, saying stuff, and he starts crying, and I just started crying, too. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of a heartbreaking season. It's more more depressing and more about relationship problem, more about relationship and relationship problems than anything. You know, there's not really a whole hell of a lot of, like, ooh-wee, fun moments, look at me, I'm Gene Simmons, you know what I mean? It's, it's, not, a, it's not a whole lot of like, like that. It's, it's more... You know about like I said relationship problems and what people go through and stuff like that and him you know uh, Shannon is just like sick and tired of like seeing you know young hot girls posing in pictures with Gene and you don't know if he's like you know sleeping with him or anything like that she has no idea and she's you know been married to or not married to him she's been with him for like 28 years and never been married and stuff like that but if you if you haven't never seen the show before I, I suggest I mean if you've seen all the other ones, I suggest checking this out just to see, because I think this season is more real than any of the other seasons that I've seen. I know there's a couple of things that were probably put on, but I think a lot of a lot of this season was pretty real. You know what I mean? I know it's a reality show, and I know, it's, like I said, most some of its you know little things are set up and put on or whatever. But I think this this season had more real stuff than anything that I've seen in past seasons. You know. And uh, next up from the history from history. Is uh, season one of Cajun Pawn Stars. If you guys know Pawn Stars, you know, like Chum Lee and uh, Big Hoss and stuff like that. This is uh, the one that takes place in uh, Louisiana. And in this one, it, it's the same same kind of concept. People going and pawning stuff. But in this one, it's weird because people go in there and pawn, you know, guitars, records, whatever. But in here, this these guys take like, you know, how much could I get for my pigs? You know what I mean? I want to sell my donkey. How much will I get for him? You know, I'm just like, what? <laughs> you know, I'm like, what? What are you gonna do with? What are you gonna do with a donkey, man? Where are you gonna put him? You know, or like someone comes in with an animal and the animal's like pooping everywhere in the store. Like, oh, I'll give you fifty bucks. You know, it's just, it's just kind of wacky and out there. If you like uh, Pawn Stars, I would I would uh, give this one a watch, just to, you know, see the differences in between that show and Cajun Pawn Stars. You know, it's just really cool. People bring in weird, different stuff, and there's a character. Like Chumley, but in this in this one, it's, it's uh, Joker. His name's Joker. Instead of you know Chumley and Pawn Stars, they have a guy named Joker. He's all kind of crazy and everything, kind of talking like he's like uh, you know one of the redneck comics or whatever. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, Kitchen Pawn Stars. It was cool. I mean, it's, it's not as cool as the original, you know, as regular Pawn Stars. But yeah. All right, guys. And the next one right here is from Magnet, and that is Goon. And uh, this one is. Uh, story, it stars uh, Sean William Scott and uh, what's his name? Uh, Leif Shriver. And in this one, he uh, Sean William Scott plays a bouncer at a bar. He's like a real nice guy. He doesn't really like getting in the scuffles, but if, you know if he has to, he's a nice guy. But he'll knock you out and you know just like you know put put lay you out, you know. And in this, he he has a friend in him. They they both really love hockey and love watching hockey. And one day he's at he's he's at a game. And uh, just one player, you know, like sees his fr like Sean William Scott's friend making fun of this certain player, and this player comes up, and Sean William Scott just lays this guy out, and the guy that you know, you know <clears throat> that manages the team sees him lay him out, and he goes, "Oh, this guy's awesome. We need this guy." So then he just you know goes into the you know becomes a <laughs> hockey player, but he's just pretty much there as a goon to like beat people down so they can win games and you know. Stuff like that. It was okay. Like, the first half of the movie, it started off really well. And as it went on, it was just kind of like, oh, it lost its edge. You know what I mean? You know, I just love Sean William Scott. You know, from, like, the American Pie movies, the rundown, all, the, you know, all his stuff that he's done. This one is not one of his best movies, but it, it's, it's worth checking out if you're a fan of Sean William Scott. This next one right here is from MPI, and that is Bag of Hammers. It's 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 a, it's a it's a weird quirky comedy drama movie, 
starring Jason Ritter. Uh, just some, uh, I forgot the other people's names right now, but Jason Ritter, you know, John Ritter's kid. And uh, it starts off with John Ritter and his friend. They're um, con men. They're con men, and they go to funerals acting like valets. You know, they have like a valet sign, but they're really s boosting people's cars and you know selling it to chop shops to make money so they can have money, you know, pay rent and stuff like that. Come to find out, uh, the lady next door and her kid, uh, the lady's having problems next door. She can't find the job. Like, life is just going all kinds of wrong for the next door neighbor. And, like, it's kind of, she's kind of sort of neglecting her little kid. And the little kid always, you know, always comes over to hang out with, uh, Jason Ritter and his, and his friend, you know, on the, on the, in the back of their house or whatever. And, you know, they become little friends and stuff like that. And then something happens to that little boy's mom. And you have to see what happens in the movie. But I just thought it was uh, a nice, funny, drama, quirky movie. I, I don't know how to explain it, but I really, really... Excuse me, I have a lot of hiccups today. But I really, really did have a lot of fun with Bag of Hammers. And if you watch the movie, like, all the way past the... Like, you know, as the credits are happening, like, you see names popping up. You see why they call it Bag of Hammers. It was kind of funny. But, uh, yeah, Bag of Hammers. It was really cool. Check it out, guys. And last up right here uh, is, for, is a Lifetime movie from, uh, yeah, Lifetime. And uh, that is uh, For One Night, starring Raven Simone. Um, I, I got this one because I really do uh, like Raven Simone. I always liked her uh, since the Cosby show. But I like, liked her like, I, like how I like Christina Ricci or Jennifer Love Hewitt. I just... I don't know, I like, sh I like supporting the Cosby kids, you know what I mean? Uh, in this one, it's a Lifetime movie, so it's like a, it's a made-for-TV thing. You can see where it fades out and where a commercial would have been and stuff like that. You know, it's like, it has a cheesiness factor of a made-for-TV movie. And in this one, it's pretty much um, a girl that wants, she, you know, she's, she, she wants to put on a prom at school, you know, for the white kids and the black kids together. Because in, in back whenever this movie was uh, set in, I forgot the, the, the setting because it was really strange because Raven Simone was talking, you know, like like an old, like someone from like the 60s or something. Yet there was, she was wearing clothes to say, you know, since, you know, Batman since 1980, blah, blah, blah. Or like 1995 or, you know what I mean? It was like weird stuff. Like I couldn't really set the time period of this, but the school she was going to always has like a white prom and a black prom. But in this, she stood up and she wanted to bring everyone together to, you know, have one big prom. It was cool. Um, Aisha Tyler is the other, the other star of this. She's also a, a funny comedian. And I, I really liked her role in this. It's just, that's, that's the simple story of the movie. It's just, you know, the girl wants to, you know, put an interracial prom together. You know what I mean? And, like, just change. You know, like, forget the, you know, why is, why is it always to be black and white proms? Like, come on, man. Like... What are we, in the 20s still? You know, like, what the, f you know, I mean, what are we doing in the 50s? But, uh, I don't know. I found this to be a nice light drama. You know, something, like I said, you would watch on, like, a Sunday afternoon or something like that. It's, it's, it's cool. If you like Raven Simone, I suggest checking this one out. But, uh, yeah, guys, that's my, uh, DVD Blu-ray update for today. This is the, the haul right here. Alright, guys, I really do appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to what I have to say about the movies I recently picked up. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye-bye.